Imagine you are walking into your favorite fast food chain. You specify what you want and you are given a receipt with a number on it. That is your number. You wait patiently until the number is called, letting you know that your food is ready. You now know you can walk up to the counter and collect your food. Believe it or not, you've just been involved in a promise. Promises are quite often given a mystical description, but they are really just something that you're already familiar with in your daily life. There are many examples you can use to describe a promise, but the one that I chose was the fast food chain. When you make an order there, you're asking for some work to be done, and that work takes some time to complete. To make it easy for the restaurant to tell you that your food is ready, they give you a receipt with a number on it. This receipt is a promise. A promise to deliver you some food in the future. After some time, the food will be ready and the restaurant can make good on their promise and deliver you that food. They call out your number to let you know that you can execute the next steps. And the next steps in this case is going to collect your food. So you're probably familiar with functions in JavaScript and functions can return values. These values can be anything like strings, numbers, objects, arrays, and a promise is just another type of thing that you can return from a function. When you call a function that returns a promise, you get back an object, just like you would get back the integer or the string from any other function that returns a value. The promise object you get back is just like any other JavaScript object you've already seen. For example, the date object. If you create a new date object using the new keyword, you now have a variable that has methods on it that you can call to do various actions with that object. An example of that would be the getTime method on the date object that will give you the Unix timestamp. And the promise object that you get back also has a few methods on it. The two most common of these methods are .then and .catch. The then method is how you tell the promise what code you want to execute if the promise resolves successfully. And the catch method is how you tell the promise what code to run if something goes wrong. If the task that created the promise returns any data, like in the case of our fast food chain, it returned us some food. In that case, the data that's returned will be passed into the function that we specify in the then method. And then you can use that argument passed into the function in your own computations. And now, now, because you've been given a promise and you've told JavaScript how to handle the success case and the failure case using the dot then and dot catch methods, there's just no need for JavaScript to wait around. It can continue doing what it needs to do while it's waiting. This is much like the cashier at the fast food chain that we were at earlier. When you make your order for the food, they don't have to stand there and wait for your food to be made before they can take another order. They take your order, they give you a receipt, then you walk away and the cashier continues taking orders even though your food's not ready. And that's a far more efficient process. And that's exactly how JavaScript does it. And this is why promises are known as asynchronous programming, because you ask for something to be done and then it can be done in the background and it might be waiting for things. But while we're waiting, we can continue doing other work. So all of the chunks of work that need to happen are not happening in a synchronous order. They're happening when they have time to happen in an asynchronous manner. In some languages, everything runs synchronously. So when a task has to wait for some asynchronous event, like waiting for a web request to return, the code will just hang on that line waiting. JavaScript isn't like that. It will just keep going and do as much as it can of all the other work it has to do. And whenever that web request returns, it will then go back to that and execute the handlers for the failure or success case, depending on how the web request returned. So that's when JavaScript will call one of your functions that you defined in the then or catch methods. And JavaScript will pass in the result of that web request as an argument into your function. In the then case, it will pass in the data that was returned by the web request. And in the catch case, it will pass in the error that was generated by whatever failed during the web request. A beautiful thing about promises is that you can change them together. This avoids something known as callback hell 
that crops up when you're using callbacks to handle asynchronous events in JavaScript. Here is some code written in the old callback style. You can see here that there's lots of levels of indentation. The code becomes unmanageable very, very quickly. Refactoring this code into promises makes life much easier. The code is easier to manage and it's much easier to read. And like I've just said, you can chain promises together. Whatever you return from one then function will get passed in as an argument to the next one. And if you return a promise from a then function, it will wait for that promise to resolve before calling the next then in the chain. And if anything goes wrong during the promise or during the chain of then calls, then we'll skip directly to the catch function and we'll handle the error there. And this allows us to centralize error handling instead of having it sporadically dotted around. We can create our own promises as well. Just like we created a date object earlier using the new keyword, we can also create promises using the new keyword. And then into the constructor of this promise, we pass a function and that function gets given two arguments. Both of them are functions, one is to resolve the promise and the other is to reject the promise. We use resolve in the success case and we use reject in the failure case. And now we can do whatever asynchronous work we need to inside this promise function. The code inside the then function or the catch function will never run until we explicitly call resolve or reject. You may have also heard of something called async await, but all this really is is just another way to write promises. Whenever we have a promise and we want the return value, we define a function inside the then method that accepts the value that we want, which is the result of the asynchronous task. Using async await, we just use the await keyword and it effectively turns the line into a synchronous line of code, just like you've seen in other languages. And whenever the promise resolves, the code execution will continue from that line. So while the happy path of async await looks nicer, it's now just one line. We don't have any thens or function callbacks or anything like that. It's just one line and it looks synchronous. You may notice that we've lost our dot catch and that means we've lost error handling. And the only way to get that back is wrapping our await call in a try catch, which immediately breaks how pretty the code looks. This, plus the fact that we're hiding the inherent complexity of asynchronous programming, means that in my opinion, async await should really be used sparingly. I think it encourages you to write bad code, and it definitely encourages you to write code that results in hard to debug problems. But that's probably a topic for another video. I hope all of that made sense to you, and you now understand JavaScript promises is just a little bit better than you did before. If that's the case, give me a thumbs up to let me know that I'm doing a good job. And if you want, you can subscribe and hit the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. But until next time, stay hungry and keep coding.